Good morning, Pelham Road. Hope you're going to have a great day today. I wanted to give you a couple of hints. I know we still are in COVID mode. And so um, your kids are going back to school and you probably do. Life is resuming a little bit of normalcy. But we're still probably looking for things to um, uh, supplement their education and uh, maybe even... Uh, educate ourselves and so I'd like to recommend uh, a couple of places okay the USHMM.org this is the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum Can you see that um, I don't know how much education your children and your teens get on the Holocaust I know a recent survey uh, got some press and it seemed to indicate that the, that uh, twenty somethings did not know uh, had had not been given the the full weight of the lessons of the Holocaust. I looked inside the study, and it didn't seem as bad as the headline maybe made it sound. Uh, there still were some weak points in our education on these matters. I mean, six million Jews did die, and uh, a lot of folks died as well. Uh, other than Jews, uh, but six million Jews did die, and um, it was horrific. And if you go to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum website, there's several interactive features on it. You don't actually have to go to the museum itself in D.C. You can go to the website, and I think you can find some things to help you, depending on the age of your children, sort of uh, bring your kids uh, up to speed and maybe even bring yourself up to speed on the tragedy that is the Holocaust um, one of the things at the museum and I can't say it in German but they have this German saying that's right over the entrance and it was over the entrance to all of the uh, uh, all of the prison camps and concentration camps and it says something like in German it says and the work will set you free um, which was just propaganda. Um, I think one of the more uh, moving um, exhibits at the Holocaust Museum is this big mound of shoes. Um, when you were going to go into the uh, chamber to die, the gas chamber, um, the shoes, you, you didn't wear shoes into that, and they were collected. And, and unlike the clothing articles that were kept, which were burned, the shoes weren't burned. And so we still have the shoes. And uh, they've taken an exhibit and made a powerful exhibit of just this big mound of shoes. And this is the poem that is there. We are the shoes. We are the last witnesses. We are shoes from grandchildren and grandfathers from Prague and Paris and Amsterdam. And because we were only made of fabric and leather and not of flesh and blood, each one of us avoided the hellfire. So, um, that's a recommendation of a place that uh, you could uh, maybe spend some time during the COVID and not just be hitting the uh, Facebook and Twitter refresh button. Um, you know, I guess the devotion for this morning, uh, where did that stuff go? Hold on a second. I found it. Silly me. It's just uh, was buried under a couple of things here. This is from Luke uh, chapter 7. It happened that on the next day, Jesus went into a city called Nain. And his disciples and a large crowd went with him. And as he drew near the city gate, a man who had died was being carried out, the only begotten son of his mother, and she was a widow. And seeing her, the Lord was moved inwardly with compassion for her and said, Do not weep. And approaching, he touched the coffin, and those who bearing it stopped. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. 
and the dead man sat up and began to speak, and he gave him to his mother. <laughs> I'm sure you were listening closely. It's a simple story. Uh, the funeral procession is heading one way, and Jesus is coming in, and they cross paths. And Jesus uh, is paying attention. I mean, that's what this whole thing starts with, is that it says that Jesus saw her. Seeing someone is a powerful thing. Jesus saw this woman, and probably a variety of things might have caught his attention, but I'm certain that one of them was that she had no one to mourn with. While there were mourners there, probably extended family and village people, she herself had no one right beside her, no husband, no son. And he knew what this world was like for her, being in it alone being in it with, uh, out a husband. And so he saw her and he had compassion. It occurs to me that one of the telltale signs of our faith in God is our ability to have compassion and empathy for others. Others not like ourselves. See, we can all have uh, a certain amount of uh, empathy and compassion for people who are going through the same thing that we're going through. I mean, when you think about adolescence, we all go through adolescence, and then, you know, in our 20s and our 30s, and even when we have our own children, we, we can identify with adolescence and, and have a lot of empathy for them because we can rekindle those feelings. We know what that was like and the awkwardness of it and the, the difficulty of it, so we can appreciate it and we can have empathy for them. And anybody, I think, can do that. But what Jesus is teaching us to do is to look at people that are entirely different than ourselves and have empathy for. I mean, Jesus was not a mother. He was not a, a spouse. I mean, there's nothing that he has in common with this woman other than their common humanity. And Jesus is able to identify with her. And I think that's the skill that probably most of us need to continue to develop and expand. I mean, we don't all share the same experiences anymore. We all went through adolescence. Maybe we've all been married or been married and then divorced. But beyond that, a variety of us walk different paths. And the way in which we can have empathy for one another is to see, to see them. I mean, that's a mother with three children, raising them by herself. Imagine what that's like. Someone is aging and they're getting confused. You can imagine what that is like. I mean, someone goes through a divorce and you haven't went through a divorce, but you're able to look at them and think that has to be painful and difficult to restart. So we're going to continue to develop our empathy characteristic. And we're going to lean on Jesus as our example here. That he was able to use his eyes and see the world and by seeing what was really going on, not looking around people or looking through people, but really looking at them, Jesus was able to have empathy for them in their situation. And that moved him to do something. I mean, it doesn't all start with, well, it doesn't end with the feeling. Empathy and compassion is the beginning point. But we take action upon that. So, have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow.